Wow, thank you everybody. Thank you, Professor Mayer. Um, thank you to Dean Daly, to Mr. Price and the Board of Counselors, uh, and to Donna Langley to forever be, t uh, forever be able to tell people that I opened for Donna Langley is a whole other gift in itself, so thank you for that. And congratulations to all the graduates and your families. Um, yes, it's such an honor to be here with you today to receive the Mary Pickford Alumni Award, a surreal, surreal honor. Uh, the last time I was in the shrine, I was attending a Scissor Sisters concert. Um, it was a great show, I had terrible seats. Uh, and the time before that, I was sitting where you are now on my own graduation day, adrenaline mixed with hangover, uh, nervousness mixed with excitement, confidence mixed with just hardcore naivete. Uh, it was hard out there, it was hard to make it out there, people told me, but I didn't believe them. I thought, yeah, you know, maybe it'll be hard for other people, but not for me. Uh, smash cut to me standing in line at 5 a.m. outside of Sunset Gower Studios, hoping to be chosen to be a paid audience member for the Montel Williams show. Um, so yeah, I mean, people were right, like, it, it was hard. Um, but, but what isn't hard, right? Like, I'm sure every one of you worked incredibly hard to get here, to be sitting here today. Hard work isn't something you do after you graduate, it's something you keep doing, because hopefully you're doing what you love, making TV and movies and games, telling stories, entertaining people, transporting them, and making them feel less alone. Uh, but I don't want to just congratulate you today, I'm also here to tell you not to listen to me. Uh, we hear a lot of talk about millennials and Generation Z, some good, some bad. I myself am Gen X, otherwise known as the slacker generation. Uh, I don't feel like a slacker, but I guess I am, according to Wikipedia and that book by that dude who started that magazine full of essays. Uh, see, that's how, that's how Gen X I am. I can't even be bothered to look up the name of that guy. Um, it's Dave Eggers, but... Uh, anyway, I've heard us described as the neglected middle child or even the sideline generation because of our tendency to not want to get involved. But that's not it at all. See, when we came out here, we took a look at the system with all its flaws and we decided we were gonna learn the rules, play the game, and then change the system from within. But then the millennials and Gen Z came through and started questioning everything. You guys were like, why are these the rules? Why is this the system? Why is it so messed up? Meanwhile, we were like, shh, just calm down. Like, we got this. We're changing things like stealth style. <laughs> but you were like, no, no, we're not doing that. And you just sort of blew everything up. And the courage that that takes to not be convinced that something is okay just because that's the way it's always been is truly admirable. <laughs> continue to question, continue to challenge and inspire me and others by following the courage of your own convictions. And some people aren't gonna like that. They're gonna push back because change is scary, of course. Also, you'll hear, well, I did it, I got through it, I survived it, why can't you? But to me, that's asking the wrong question. It shouldn't be, why can't you, but rather, why should you? Why should anyone? So you can turn right back to us, the generation that came before you, and ask, why did you? When, while having experience is something to value and respect, it's not the only thing, and it shouldn't be a given. So don't listen to me, to anyone who tells you that that's just the way things are. Except don't stop listening to me just yet, because I have two quick pieces of advice to tell you real, real, real fast. Uh, the first one might seem obvious, but for some reason it is not. Uh, don't take moments from movies and try to incorporate them into your real life. Um, it won't turn out well. Uh, don't, don't, do not write a disgruntled manifesto late one night and email it to your entire workplace like in Jerry Maguire. You will be fired and you won't ride back in triumphantly arm in arm with Cuba Gooding Jr. You will just be fired. Trust me. Uh, and the second thing is, do understand that it's important to know your worth. You all have a story to tell, multiple stories to tell. And even though you might not think people are interested in what you have to say, let me tell you something, it doesn't matter. Know your value and don't get discouraged. For example, for a long time, uh, the gatekeepers in television comedy were straight white dudes. And, you know, nothing against straight white dudes, some of my best friends, you know. But, uh... <laughs> But they were the ones who ran the TV shows who had the power to hire and fire you. And like, I'm none of those things, right? I'm not straight, I'm not a dude, and I'm not white. 
So I'm basically running 0 for 3. Um, were those guys interested in a show about two women living in New York City, one of whom was basically a grifter pirate? Who knows? I didn't stop to ask. While I was on staff running on other people's shows during the week, after hours, and on weekends, I just wrote what I wanted to see. And eventually, I had enough people decide that they wanted to see it too, and I managed to get my first TV show, Don't Trust the B in Apartment 23, on the air. Uh, thank you. Granted, it only, it only lasted 26 episodes, but hey, I was finally in charge of my own show. For the first time, I'd be the one calling the shots, which eventually led me to Fresh Off the Boat, which just hit 100 episodes, and we just found out this morning got season six pickup, which is cool. Thank you. Uh, then led me to directing my first movie, Always Be My Maybe, coming out in a few weeks on Netflix. Netflix told me that if I managed to work that in, they'd give me a free lifetime subscription, so sorry about it. Uh, but really, really it's about trusting yourself, trusting your instincts, trusting your story, and getting a seat at the table. Or better yet, to quote former Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Lastly, I just want to mention my parents very quickly, specifically my mother. Uh, she's in poor health. She couldn't be here with us today, even though I know she wants nothing more in the world. She was born in Iran at a time and into a culture where, because she was a girl, she wasn't valued as much as her three brothers. She didn't have the choices and the opportunities that they did. So when she came to the United States as an adult and had me, she decided, much to the dismay of her own mother and all of her aunts, that she wasn't going to teach me how to clean or cook how to do laundry, how to sew a button. The unforeseen consequence of that is that I'm pretty much inept at all things domestic, like <laughs> literally to an embarrassing degree. But to her, those were things that had been used against her her whole life, a way to judge and limit a woman's potential. She wanted me to be That was her. Thank her enough for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to my amazing friends and family who came out here to support me today. Special shout out to my seven-year-old niece, Natalie, and my three-year-old nephew, Sonny. Hi, Natalie, Sonny. Once again, I celebrate you guys. I thank you. I congratulate you, class of 2019.